All right, I'm going to attempt to show you how to get a home bridge running on a QNAP server running the new QTS software um, and using the container station. So I guess the easiest way to begin is log into your NAS via the web browser and then make sure you have the container station which is in the App Store. So if you go to the App Center here, I do a search for uh, contain oh there it is right there container station um, looks like that install it once it's installed you'll get this fancy icon on your dock and open that up now to start you're gonna have nothing here I've already got my home bridge running so I don't have to download anything new um, but this is the version I'm running I think it was actually created by uh, this dude for Synology, but it still works in here. So what I do what you should do to begin with is go to create container and then search for home bridge And once you search for home bridge, this is the one that I used. So this is the one I would use if I were you uh, Instead of create there'll be install here. I believe is what it's called but in any event create install or click on create or install whichever one it says and Then once that's done, it's going to create a container down here for you but we're going to want to configure it a little bit and I'm not too familiar with containers in QNAP so we're going to do it via the terminal. So what I would do is after you've created it and it shows up down here, just click on the one you created and click on remove um, and then remove it. Once you remove it, we still have the source files on our NAS so we can create new containers from that um, and that's what we're going to do via terminal. So go ahead and remove it and then once it's removed, the next step is we need to do two things. Well, we're going to SSH into our server first. So we're going to uh, uh, one here. Uh, and then once we log into there, so now we're just SSH'd in. So the next thing you're going to want to do once you're in is we're going to want to set up a location to keep our config files. Now you can do that in the default location, but I like to set it up in my share. So um, the next step would be to either manually go there or what I do is I just use Coda and SFTP in. Um, and then when I SFTP in, I'm in the root and I go into my share go into Docker, and then currently my setup's here in Homebridge. So for this, let's just set up a new folder. We'll call it uh, Test Stuff. And in Test Stuff, we'll put Homebridge. And then in here, we're gonna put config files. Now I copied a couple to my local machine here. I'll post this online too, so you can see them if you need to. Uh, they're nothing exciting. Uh, but these two config files will drop here on the server. And what they are is one just setting up the base nonsense for Homebridge. Here's the name, pin, port, username, blah, blah, blah. And then accessories. I've got two accessories here, um, the Chamberlain ones. And, and then I have this install here, which the install uh, shell script will install the plugin for Chamberlain. And that's pretty hunky-dory exciting. Um, so then the next step would be to run the docker command because uh, that's what these containers are uh, but it's kind of long and arduous here so let me copy I've got it already copied and pasted over here oh wait let me put test stuff in there test stuff slash home bridge okay so then you should be able to I'll just actually let me create a new file here show you what it looks like um, I've got port one. These are this is the port. I'll I'll actually paste the full routes because you're gonna want to change it. It runs on port uh, five uh, five one eight two four five one eight two six something like that. Um, but just for this example, and then here we got slash share slash docker slash test stuff slash homebridge is where it's gonna install our stuff and look for our config. And then this path here is the path on the NAS to get to that uh, source docker file that we downloaded to create our container from. So if we just copy this and paste that into the uh, terminal that we SSH'd into for our NAS, run that, uh, 
Then we come down here. Oh, look at that. We got a new container, test home bridge. <clears throat> and as long as the paths are correct, you shouldn't get any errors. You might get an error. Uh, it says your config file couldn't be found. Well, something's wrong with your paths then. So you got to recheck your paths. And it's going kind of slow here. Do we have any errors? Apparently we do. And you can click this to see the console. Oh, okay. So we're, we're good to go. This is the fancy key you want to put into your HomeKit app on your iOS device. Oh, yeah, okay. That's my bad. It's bitching because it uh, doesn't like the fact that I have fake credentials for our garage door. So if we want, we could go back to our test home bridge. And we go to overview. You see here, we can stop it. That should shut her down. And then we go back to our config file for now. Let's just remove our accessories because we don't need those. And save our config file. And it's trying to log into our my garage doors, but I gave it fake credentials, so it couldn't. Um, so we shut it down and we start it back up. It should use our config file again. And there we go. All right. So now it's running. There's nothing installed for it. I mean, there's a plugin installed, but there's no configuration for it. Uh, but it's running, so now you could use it. And so if you ran your HomeKit app on your iOS device, it should see your uh, home bridge and it should ask you for a key or what do they call it here? I have a home kit app, uh, some code. All right, the scan this code. Um, I couldn't scan it, but you can manually enter it in, manually enter it in. Your home bridge shows up. And then once you add accessories to your config file or a platform to your config file, it'll now show up. So I don't know. Hope this was somewhat helpful. I didn't see much information out there in relation to how to do this. So I thought, eh, why not? Anyway. All right, thanks.